Hey, I'm a web developer who's, who's worked remotely for the past five years. And one challenge of working remotely can really be having unfiltered access to the internet. And for a lot of people, especially guys, it's pretty easy to develop a porn habit. And this kind of prompted me to spend a lot of time researching habits and how you break bad habits. Basically, one of the best ways to break a bad habit is to reduce environmental cues because the way a habit works is you have an initial cue which starts this kind of automatic process. So a cue when it comes to maybe the habit of browsing porn is you see some sort of image which causes you to automatically open you know, maybe a private browser and then look for a specific website. And if you really think about it, you, you probably aren't actually thinking when you do this because it's a habit and you've sort of, your brain isn't exactly working when you're doing this. It's, it's on autopilot. One of the rules when you're breaking a bad habit is just, just make it as inconvenient as possible to do that habit. When I was researching locking down technology, most of the, most of the things that I researched basically said, it's not even worth doing this because it's impossible to block this stuff out. And I personally found that there are some really effective ways to make it just extremely inconvenient. One of the best things that locking down technology does is it sort of frees up this, this willpower that you don't know you're using all the time. I personally found that it was a huge mental relief and I felt like I didn't, I wasn't always around some kind of loaded, loaded gun. So just to kind of give you a high level view of my system I've come up with for myself, I basically block things on my home network. So any devices connected to my home network uh, goes through a DNS filter, which is extremely strict and also very difficult to disable. And then for any sort of roaming devices like my cell phone or a laptop, I use a roaming client on my laptop to connect to my DNS network. And then I use device level filtering, which is extremely uh, difficult to circumvent on my, on my mobile phone. So the way that I make this really inconvenient to disable any of these safeguards I have in place is that any account I create, like my DNS filter account or my BlockerX account, um, I use ProtonMail for the account management. So I create the account with ProtonMail and then I don't store the password. So if I want to access DNS filter, I have to reset the password, which goes to my ProtonMail. And then I've got two-factor authentication set up on everything. So it sort of is another level of security, but also kind of inconvenience. I actually use these accounts. Um, I use my DNS filter in my blocker X to block ProtonMail. So I can't actually really easily access the thing where I get the passwords for those accounts. So the first device I started focusing on locking down was my phone. I spent a lot of time looking at filtering apps that could potentially help with this, but I probably went through dozens of these apps and every single one of them was really easy to get around. And so if something's so easy to get around, it's, it's kind of just a waste of time to even implement it. But I did end up finding a solution called Blocker X, and I've used this for over a year now. And it's worked so effectively that I've completely stopped thinking about my phone as a source of something that I can find anything uh, adult, adult on, I guess. Uh, but basically, the reason this app was so good is that, first off, the dev team is really dedicated and very good at picking out edge cases where someone can get around or circumvent it. And when I started using it a year ago, I did find some exploits, sent it over to their team, and they fixed it within that week. So this is great news because a lot of these apps are sort of built by like one developer or they're not really maintained. And these have to be like a high priority for a specific team for it to even be valuable. They give you lots of different options that you can use. So for example, you can choose to connect to a VPN, which is sort of like using a DNS filter or something like that on, on your phone's network and routes all your traffic through a VPN, which, which blocks uh, just a, a huge amount of content. You might not be comfortable with doing that, or maybe you need another VPN on your phone. So this is an optional feature. Another thing is they, they make it really difficult to uninstall or delete the app. It's definitely possible, but it's not something where you can just go into your, your device settings and override it. They use an accountability partner to deal with uh, generating an access code, which you need to modify the settings in the app. So once you set it, you have to use this access code to, uh, to to modify it again. In my case, I just use ProtonMail, which is my accountability partner. 
another useful thing they do is they block unsupported browsers. So one issue with these apps is that you can usually just download another browser very quickly and then they're not supported. So you can, you can find content, but in this case, blocker X by default supports a few of the, of the common browsers and then doesn't allow you to browse on anything else. You can block image and video search videos and images are kind of difficult sometimes to filter out. So you might just choose to block this entirely. And then they enforce the safe search on the browser. So another really good feature they added is they added a timer to the block page. Basically when you visit content that's blocked by the, either the VPN or uh, the other layer of, of filtering they have, it, it takes three seconds to get rid of the screen and use your phone again. So if you're just fishing for content that's gotten past these filters, it's really tedious and a lot of people probably won't do it. Okay, so when it comes to the home network, the reason you want to do it on your home network is that uh, adding adding something similar to BlockRx on your computer or laptop really doesn't work. You can use browser extensions and all that. You really need to do blocking on the network level or you're kind of wasting your time. Best solution I found was to use a DNS filter and there's there's many solutions out there and I've tried several of them. The two, the two leading ones that I found that are, are most set up for this kind of situation is something called open DNS and then DNS filter. So I started out using open DNS, which is, it's fairly effective, but I found that there were a lot of features missing from it that made it, made it kind of a non-option for me. And I had some reliability issues with it. So the service I use now is something called DNS filter, which is actually mainly used for enterprise but they also have home network options and small business options. The reason I really like DNS filter is that since it's made for enterprise, it's, it's a fairly comprehensive solution. So real quick, I'm just gonna go through DNS filter and some edge cases that I found with it and then kind of some general guidance on how you set this up. First thing I do is I make my DNS filter account using my ProtonMail email, and then I, I don't save the password for it. So the only way I can access DNS filter is if I reset my password and then I use ProtonMail to click the reset password link. Then I create a policy, which is kind of how you, f how you control filtering using DNS filter. And I manually add to the block list, I add ProtonMail. And then I also, especially when I was starting out with this, I add domain names like, I add like Reddit and things where there's kind of, um, it's kind of difficult to filter content out on. I just get rid of it entirely. And then under threats, there's definitely some useful things you can enable here. It's an extra level of security on your network. So a lot of times this will take out domains that aren't filtered because of adult content, but have some sort of malicious in intent. You can also enable safe search and enforce it on all, on all search engines. And safe search is actually pretty effective at filtering out a lot of content, especially images and videos. And I would definitely recommend enabling this. Then under categories, we have some generic, you know, categories you'd find in any filtering service. So the next thing you need to do after you've set up this filter is you need to go to deployments and then create a site. Since this is made for enterprise, they're sort of assuming that a site has to do with a specific location. So if you go into a network, you know, they, have you enter an address just for, you know, your IT department's purposes of sort of mapping out things. And in this case, it doesn't matter. We only need one site, which represents our home network. And then what you need to do is you need to fill in your IP4 address, which is going to be your, uh, your network address. Most people have a dynamic IP address for their home network. So this could change in a few days and then DNS filter would stop working. So instead of an IP address, what you want to do is you want to use a service called no IP. You can use an actual host name to represent that dynamic IP. After you set up no IP, you're going to use that domain here instead of an IP address. So another way you can connect to DNS filter is with something called a roaming client. You can also use like a program that runs on your laptop or your desktop that connects to DNS filter automatically. So I typically actually use both. I use the roaming client and then I 
also make sure that I have a, a host name for my home address. And then I've kind of got two layers to really make sure that this thing's always working. And then the roaming client helps cover the laptop when you are, um, when you're like away from your home, home network, it'll still connect to DNS filter. So after you set up a site and you've set up the host name that's mapped to your IP address, you need to also set up your router to connect to DNS filter. There's a lot of documentation and, and tutorials on how to do this, but just as a, a quick overview, what I personally do is I set my DHCP server on, on my router to use the, um, the DNS filter IP addresses. And it's a pretty easy, simple change. Every router is going to have this. Just look for your DHCP fields and just point them to DNS filter. You could also get around DNS filter by just logging into your router and then removing the, the um, DHCP servers as well. So I also use ProtonMail to manage my router access. So that's just one thing you should consider when you're doing this. Anyway, that's kind of the setup I use personally. There's probably better ways to do this, but um, I found that this has been extremely helpful for me as I work remotely and I don't want to be dealing with all these distractions. So I hope this helps some of you out. If you have any additional suggestions or you want to add to this, feel free to leave a comment. And then I will also have an article to accompany this video, which will be linked in the description once it's, once it's done.